All right, so here in this problem, the first thing as always, we'll read the question sentence. And that's gonna ask us here, what is the canoe's downstream speed? Okay, sounds good. So right there, we see that it says again, what is the canoe's speed? But specifically, I see that it says downstream. Now for this specific problem, this isn't going to be anything terrifying. This isn't gonna be every, you know, anything crazy. Only because we're given that um, we're traveling downstream already and we have the time and the distance. So we already have what we need. So we can plug in both of these, but in this problem we notice that we have our distance as 56 miles and we have the time here listed as four hours. So from there, when we go ahead and write down our formula, our distance equals rate times time, you might be able to notice that this right here, what we're looking for is the rate. And for this specific problem and most problems, speed and rate are gonna be the same thing. So with that, let's plug in what we have. We have over here, the distance being 56 miles. And then we have the time given to us here as four hours. We have to go ahead and find that rate. Now everyone, quick question. Typically, to find the distance, we'll go ahead and multiply the rate and the time together. But in this question, we see that we're looking for the rate. What are we gonna do? What operation are we going to use instead? Yeah, we're gonna be using division instead. Because remember everyone, typically to get distance, we multiply the rate and the time together. But in this case, we're not looking for the distance, we're looking for the rate. So we have to work backwards. So I have to get rid of that four that I'm multiplying, and that'll just be a division of four. Once we divide both sides by four, it'll cancel out on the right side, nice and easy. And now all we have to do is four divided into 56. So four going into 56, let's figure that out here. Four going into five is going to be one. Subtract the four gives us one left over. Then we have the six after we drop things down. Four goes into 16. That will end up being four times. And there we are. The rate that we get after we do our math here, that's going to be 14 miles per hour. And there we are. So the correct answer for this one here, everyone, will be answer choice D. And the main lesson for this one is that if you're looking for the rate or the time, either one, we're going to be dividing instead of multiplying. Again, to find the rate or the time, we divide. To find that distance, we will multiply. But let's go ahead and see how we do in the next one. So next question, and as always, regardless of the topic that we're doing, we're gonna read the question first. Question sentence, that is. So here it says, if there are this many flowers on the garden, how many tulips? All right, everybody, so before we even begin, it sounds like in this problem, we're talking about flowers and tulips. But at the end of the day, what we really care about is going to be how many tulips there are. That's really the main focus. There's some other things, other details, but really the main focus is counting the number of tulips. So let's go ahead and get it going. So we want the number of tulips. Let's just go ahead and write that right here. And then here it says we have 210 flowers. So I'm just gonna highlight that as well. I'll just go ahead and say flowers equals 210. Okay, so with that, we know that we have two things being compared, tulips and flowers. And when we read the first sentence, take a look at this. It says, a garden has tulips and roses planted in a ratio where three out of every seven flowers are tulips. Everyone, let's go ahead and read that one more time. Because the key word that I just saw, that key word is ratio. A ratio where three out of every seven flowers are tulips. So what does that tell me? It tells me that we have a ratio that we can write. And again, it's a ratio of tulips to flowers. And what is that ratio going to be? It says three out of every seven flowers. So we have seven flowers, three of them are tulips. So take a look at what we've got going on here. We are comparing the same things in the same way. And that's what a proportion is. 
This is a proportion word problem. We see that we are comparing tulips to flowers, tulips to flowers. So let me show you a nice, neat little way to write this proportion so you can always get it down the right way. So again, the comparison that I'm making, trying to find tulips, comparing the flowers. So I'll go ahead and write T and F. So watch this, everybody. Help me out. We have T for tulips right here. And I'm going to put that over 210 for flowers. So let me again, let me just move this a little further away so we don't confuse it. And I'll even change its color. I'll change it to blue. So we have T over 210 because, again, it's tulips and that's flowers. And we're going to make that equal, again, same comparison. Tulips over flowers. Three over here for tulips. Seven over here for flowers. Before I continue, yes or no, does that make sense? That to get this proportion the right way, we need to compare the same things in the same way, which is, in this case, tulips on the top, flowers on the bottom. As long as we do that, that is going to give us an appropriate and proper proportion that we can solve nice and easy. So once we're here, there's one simple way that we can go about it. There's multiple ways that we can go about this. But the easiest way that people like to go about is cross multiplying and dividing. T times 7, that's 7T. And then 210 times 3 gives you 630. And everybody, after we cross multiply, what's that last operation again? That last operation is always division. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and divide by 7 here. 7 there. And so here we cross out, cancels out right there. And we have T equals 90. Because 63 divided by 7 is 9. Tack that 0 on at the end. And so that'll be 90. But really the most important part about this problem, number one, is that, hey, look, as long as you're comparing the same things in the same way, and you write that comparison out, you're good. And then number two, I just want to remind you that we don't always have to cross multiply and divide. Sometimes you might be able to notice some conveniences. So if you take a look over here, you might notice that 7 times 30 is 210. And guess what? Compare the same things in the same way. If I'm going right to left, and that's times 30, well, then the same thing can happen up top. Right to left times 30. Don't believe me? Everyone, what is 3 times 30 going to give us? 3 times 30 gives us the same exact 90 that we had earlier. So there we go. The correct answer here is D, 90 tulips. And hopefully that's a good little refresher for proportions. All right, here we have another question. And the question reads, evaluate the following expression, 6m divided by 2 plus 7, when m equals 5. So remember, everyone, all we have to do to solve these types of problems is first replace the variable here where it belongs. So we have 6m, so that'll be 6 and 5. And remember, that's going to be multiplication. So next, we have divide by 2 plus 7. So from here, all we need to do is order of operations. We have multiplication here, then division there, and then we'll add at the end. But remember, when it comes to multiplication and division with your PEMDAs, remember that multiplication and division, it's whichever comes first, left to right. So here, what we're seeing is multiplication first, then we divide the result. So 6 times 5 is 30. And then we'll divide by 2. 30 divided by 2 gives us 15. And then we have 15 plus 7, and that will end at 22. But again, big, big piece of information here. When it comes to multiplication and division, it's whichever comes first, left to right. But nonetheless, the correct answer here is answer choice B, everybody. And there we go. And I hope you're ready for the next one.